longtime magician and a skeptic, and as I read the book, uh, a psychic or a former psychic. You, you talked about how you got involved with that and your motivations you mentioned now. Um, and Randy uh, wrote the forward of the introduction. I don't have the book in front of me. Um, and uh, you make claims in the book where you can sort of share uh, anecdotes about uh, your experiences as a psychic and what we can learn from it. And as I understand from Randy, we've had conversations, the reason you wrote that intro is because of what people can learn from that account. Still, as we've had this discussion, uh, it seems there's consensus, there's agreement that any time you are giving that sort of psychic advice or uh, dealing with these uh, central beliefs people have and uh, helping them with their problems, uh, that you need to tread lightly and dis use disclaimers and uh, not sort of be a uh, counselor. I speak for everyone except for Max as is bristling. Uh, well, I'm just not sure where you got the word consensus out of it. Uh, yeah, consensus minus one, uh, and and even and no, even. No, I don't. I don't think it's it's, it's that one. Well, and even even Max or uh, uh, Banachek, uh, uh, when we're talking about disclaimer, we understand as uh, Mark mentioned or when we were talking about Dunninger, opening with the linking rings. That's a way to frame things in ways uh, that may let folks know I'm not. No, no, it's also a way of making a point that made. No, 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 that was a way of digging it in, driving home that what they're doing is, is the real thing. Yeah. Here is an example of something that's not real. This is a magic trick. Yeah, so yeah. It, 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 and it's not doing that this video. That was a little disclaimer. That yeah. was him building up what he's already doing. It's real. It's kind of like me reading so, so, so this is fake, and what I'm about to show you is real. That's right. Yeah. So, so, let me make a very simple statement here. The issue of disclaimers is one that has been discussed many times over the years, both within the magic and mentalism circles, but also in skeptical circles. So let me make the following simple statement of fact. Disclaimers don't do anything. Other than perhaps make certain skeptics feel better. But the, but the, proof, on that, the proof on that is a fellow named David Hoy. David Hoy began as a Baptist minister and then became a mentalist and later became a real psychic, whatever the hell that means. Uh, but during the middle phase, Dave was working Playboy clubs in the 1960s under the name Dr. Faust. And his opening line, he would come out on stage and he would say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Faust and I am a fake. I don't know how much of a, of a more clear disclaimer you can, you can give. And after virtually every show, Someone would come up to him and say, okay, I know you made the disclaimer for legal reasons, but when do you get these powers? <laughs> so, yeah, but yes. Max, Max it, I, I think on that, that that was just something he said at the very beginning, and then he goes out and blows it away, and they have no knowledge at that point, the majority of the audience forgot. By the way, he, he uh, ran the fundamental, fundamental Universal Church of Knowledge, I think the acronym on that, so yes. Um, <laughs> Sister organization, consumer union network, is, uh, in the <laughs> But I, 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 I personally, when it comes to disclaimers, a lot of people argue with me. Um, I usually, in my regular show, have a disclaimer in the middle, you know, at the beginning and, and towards the end. Uh, not the show you just saw recently, but because that was a much shorter version of my show. But I feel more responsibly, you know, a lot of uh, magicians now I recently say, you know, if he were doing like that, he would not stop in the middle of it and say, oh, I'm just an actor. Well, of course not. Go see a play and know the context. But when I get up on stage as a mentalist, I'm doing these unusual things that they have no explanation for whatsoever. I become the authority figure on that. What I say goes that moment. It's no different than having a neurosurgeon stand on a stage in a theater and he starts talking about the human mind and brain, and people will sit there and go, wow, this guy really knows what he's doing. He really is a neurosurgeon. So I can become a psychic if that's what I want to do on that stage. Um, so I know that there's going to be a large amount of people that are going to come on my show that are going to believe no matter what I say, they're going to believe. There's going to be a amount of people that are not going to believe no matter what I say. But there's a large amount of people in the center somewhere who come to the show and they have absolutely no clue. And they see what I do and they want an answer for what it is. And I feel a responsibility to give them the answer in mind. This is just entertainment. I'm not a psychic. Now, I know some of the people are still going to think I probably do. I get that. But there's quite a lot of people that will come up to me after the show and 
they were saying that he could be real, just like you said with, with, with David, who probably even claimed he was a psychic, and said, hey, I'll give you some readings. Not during the time of Dr. Foster. Okay, but later he went off that deep end and yeah. they, you know, we can go deep end here. But, uh, so, so when they come to me and they say, hey, um, you know, you have powers, it has to be real. I say no, it's one of those things I told you about. It's either, you know, it's magic, psychology, verbal, non-verbal communication, all mixed together, you know, primarily magic. I'm not a psychic. There are people who get on the stage, they will do what I do, they will try to convince you they're real. No, so you, they're lying to you, you are lying you to yourself. Over the years, made, among other things, made very good use of that wonderful network of some uh, I absolutely do, yes. Yeah, I take my five months this to create the illusion of the same. Which I think is a wonderful description. All I'm saying here, I'm not saying, uh, I think that the issue of disclaimers, the issue of audience perception, uh, is, is not an insignificant issue, but I think it's an issue that involves responsible decisions being made sure. by the performer. Now, I don't know what the answer is. I think it's individual. I think it's an individual. I can say it's all my conclusions. All I'm saying is there, there, there is this almost magical belief that the existence of the disclaimer solves the problem. It doesn't. And it doesn't. And the uh, disclaimer is to the issue of, of belief systems like a band-aid to cancer. Yeah. <laughs> so Randy, you wrote the introduction to a book of, of, uh, of Marx where he talked about being a psychic and uh, explored some of these issues. Um, in closing, let's get comments from the panelists on uh, you know, really where this line is. All of you are magicians. Uh, one of you, and I think uh, actually Ray also, and Randy early in his career, uh, and uh, uh, would make stronger claims, even though Ray earlier in his career, uh, when you were doing palmistry, at first you were sort of persuaded that, wow, this is so effective, maybe I do have an ability. Um, none of you now are giving psychic advice to my knowledge, you're not giving psychic <coughs> advice, trying to help people with their belief in the paranormal. Um, if if there is a line and it's not disclaimers, last question, uh, illicit discussion. Um, where is the line? Okay, um, well, let me let me let me. It's so black and white. It really is like. For example, if an agent hires me to do a children and not children. Party, an adult party, and they want to see handwriting analysis. And they don't want psychics and they don't want tarot cards because handwriting analysis is more scientific. It's a system. Once you learn a system and you know how to get on your feet and run with it, it's no different than palm reading or anything else. Okay? So, but if an agent hires me to be a, palm, a, 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 a handwriting analysis, I wear a suit and tie, and I go in and I make handwriting analysis. And I try to inject, let me finish, I try to inject, no matter what situation it is, skepticism into what I'm doing. But do you think people leave your handwriting analysis demonstrations thinking that you're learning about their personality? From no, they leave my handwriting demonstrations entertained, which is what And if you're hired as a psychic leader, Mark? Pardon me? And if you're hired as a psychic leader, what, I don't understand what, what the question is. What do you do if you're hired as a psychic reader? Well, so you go as a psychic reader? This is a test. If you're hired as a psychic reader, do you do other things? Like, I, like I just said, I inject, I make sure that when I am giving a reading, and this is why I think I have been successful, whatever that means, I, while I'm giving them the reading, I tell them things like, yes, if I'm looking at the lines in your hand, by the way, there is some science here. Did you know that this about your fingers and this about your hands? So if you're hired as a psychic reader and you give a psychic reading, does the subject of your psychic reading come away believing you might possibly be psychic or disbelieving it? Or what information do you, do you uh, provide, if any, to that? Just like I, I let them decide. For you let them decide themselves. That's correct. I say one thing about that. I, I would have an issue with that. Um, of course. And I couldn't tell you that. I said you want to have an issue with that. I have to get to this point eventually. I know that they tried right. three or four times and it didn't work. Let me explain why I have an issue with that. Because you're reading the poem, you say this line means that, that line means that. And right. you give them a real fact about something about their hand. And all that does is bolster up that, hey, those lines must also mean something as well. Because no. you don't say straight up. It's still a BS at that line. You say, you know, if you were doing 
arm reading, you know, that might mean that, life might mean that, but you know what? It's not real. You know you what you're reading mind? I'm not asking you to read my book. What you just said a minute ago was that I give a reading on the farm, and then I give them some actual facts that are true. This is this so is true. And what I also say is I say to them something like, you know, it doesn't matter whether I use your palm or goat entrails or cat turds, whatever it is, all I'm doing is telling you, answering questions that you're asking me in the most honest way I can. So unless you have a reading by me, you're putting me, you're lumping me in with the gypsy carnival, and, and that I object to. And if you read my book, you'll see clearly. Now, I read the book, back back to the same and I couldn't to figure see. out what side you were on. Uh, and it took me quite a while. Yeah, because you were on more sides than I could count, but then suddenly the answer became clear to me. You're on one very clear side, your side. Yeah, and that's the only side. You're on. So, and you have contempt for your subjects that you read them if they're not wise enough to take your advice or appreciate your wondrousness and the gift of their lives. Other than that, you have nothing but contempt for them. And it's clear that you are a lowercase skeptic. Yeah that you don't believe any of the bullshit yourself. Oh, I see. But to be an uppercase skeptic, uppercase skeptics are not people in this room, and the other people, on this, some of the other people on this panel, <laughs> are, are not just concerned with what you, what you as an individual think or see about the world. We're concerned with educating others That's what and improving about. others' lot in the world. Well, first of all, my okay. character as is such, good. it is impossible for me to see you as an ally in this movement. You were not an investigator when you were working for 900 lines. You were paying the rent as a phony psychic. Okay, can sure. I respond? Can I please respond? Yeah. And it's, uh, I, I totally anticipated this attack. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, but not because you're psychic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I, you know, we don't have enough time, but we're going to run out of time, so I don't Try. really want to defend what I did either. You know, I did not write this book. I didn't want the character to be admirable. I wasn't writing a deep book. You succeeded at that. Good. Then you got it. So the point was, these are despicable human beings. And I wanted to show a anti-hero, maybe, I don't know. The point was, my publisher didn't want another debunking book. He wanted a book like Nightmare Alley. He wanted a book about what it's really like, what the business is like, what are these, how low can you go when you're laughing at somebody who's just lost their pet cat and you're doing a reading telling them what their dead child is. And there was never a dead child. How low can you go if you're in the same company? No, I'm sorry, that's not true. I never pretended to talk to them. I'll just leave this. Some years ago, uh, and I okay. think you, 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 you mentioned this, uh, I won't do the whole story right now, we haven't got time, maybe someday. But um, Psychop embraced Kreskin and brought him to the National Conference. This led to a, to a very strong and really permanent, more or less, disagreement between Paul Kurtz and myself. Randy could uh, tell you about that too. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and basically, what I said to Kurtz, and I'll here for the record, which is, if you're going to call yourself a skeptic, if you're in the magic, if you're in magic or, or mentalism or any, any of these, or the mystery arts, you would call it, pretentiously, he said, um, and you're going to claim that you're a skeptic activist and you're trying to make the world a better place with your specialized knowledge, the one requirement, the litmus test, entry to the club, Claiming for that good, being part of that good cause, is you need to be willing to be explicit about what you do. You need to be willing to say that you, whether it's trickery, magic, deception, whatever specific words you want to use, but you need to label the product, okay? And Mark, your website to this day says that you neither declare yourself as a genuine psychic nor give any disclaimers referring to let its work stand on its own merits, such as it is and allow each individual to write their own personal conclusions. You may do many things, Mark, but you're not a capitalist skeptic and you're not part of my movement. Yeah. So, uh, with that bolstering sense of fellow feeling, two, <laughs> two, two things, Mark is a rejoinder and we'll end with Randy's uh, thoughts. Any, uh, anybody, 
anybody who knows what I do for the IIG and what I've done for the last several years on the Jeff Probst show and on uh, Inside Edition with Teresa Caputo, uh, you go to my website and in 10 seconds, I mean, yeah, that's, that's on my website. Because I do want people to feel like it's okay for you to make up your own mind. But if you look at the balance of the rest of the re website, you're going to see skeptical all written all over it. The first 10 seconds you go to my website. So he can do whatever he wants, you know, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But uh, I have information to give this movement, and I feel like I have information that's valuable. If you don't want it, fine. That's what he's saying. You don't want to know how some of these things, he's a magician, a mentalist. He doesn't, he did not go into this movement as a psychic. Who would? Okay? So again, I'm not going to defend myself. You either like the book or you don't. Check out my IIG credits. Check out all the testing I've been involved with. We do tests all the time, a couple times a year. Okay? And I'm the one who's there working for this movement. So I don't, I'm not worried about being a capital top drawer skeptic if this is the kind of reception I'm going to get. Because I'm used to it. I'm used to being on this burner. So I leave it up to you. You get to decide. There's no absolutes. Okay? Sorry, and, that's all I can say. And before we finish, Randy wouldn't write the introduction if he thought I wasn't part of the movement. Okay? Woohoo! And, and before we finish up with Randy Mark, uh, while I objected to some things in your book personally, I will commend the book on the grounds you just mentioned. There's a lot to learn from it. We're not talking ethics there when we're reading it. We're talking about learning. Uh, that it's is not for speech. skeptics. It's yeah. for the general, the person who's at the airport who says, oh, I'd like to read something interesting on the flight home. Oh, I think it's great for skeptics. So, uh, Randy, do you have some closing thoughts on this? It, it should be said, skeptics like a lot of heat, but we also want to elicit life with our conversations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, thank you. Oh, thank you for giving me the privilege of closing this discussion, I would like to do it on a somewhat lighter note, if I may. A story about a gentleman whose name I'm passing down the table is to be recognized here, but we won't use the name. This was a very prominent mentalist when I was a kid. I was a young teenager, and uh, I had the freedom to wander about for various reasons and see shows that I wanted uh, to observe. And I saw this gentleman <coughs> Advertised, and I knew that he was a well known mentalist, and his name is still famous in the field. And I went in to see his performance. It was at some ladies' club or other. I sat in the back and I watched, and I, I understood most of what he was doing. Uh, but one trick he did with a book really floored me, and I thought, wow, I'm going to come back tomorrow and see this again. I came back the next day, made my impression again, and sat in the same seat, back to the room. And I saw it the second time, and suddenly, boom, 